Hello, it's Elizabeth here, I'm one of Lisa's design team members and I thought I would show you today how to make the most of the trellis background stamp that Lisa has recently released. So I've got quite a few little beginner's tips in this video but this is the main stamp that we're going to be working with. And we're going to be using some heat embossing powders today these are the white ones that Lisa provides um, and, you, and you can also get it in black and this will show you just how brilliant the stamp is. Because we're using a large background stamp today I opted to use the stamping platform. You can use a um, big block but I'll show you a few reasons why the Stamping platform is my preferred tool for this particular task. So I've got some super smooth stamping card and, and I'm prepping it with some anti-static powder. This will stop any finger marks uh, showing. So this is an embossing ink. I've got the Wow but any of the Versafines will work brilliantly. And you have to be quite generous with the stamping at this stage. It's not a problem if you miss any and I'll show you the reason why a little later on but bear in mind that this is a very detailed stamp and this part of the job can't really be rushed. So I'm only using my fingertips and it's quite a firm uh, pressing down on the stamp here and you're just trying to allow the embossing ink to grip the paper it's pretty much covered but that area there uh, needs another layer of the ink so if you match the corners up exactly you'll find that you can fill in those gaps by bringing the platform cover over and stamping just that area that you missed. So for me that's a big bonus when you're using the stamping platform because it means that you haven't completely wasted the product or your time in trying to stamp out the image. It's a bit difficult to see here but um, it's almost like a ghost print. So this is where you bring in the white embossing powder and I've used several of these over the years but I do like uh, this new range that Lisa has brought out. I've had very successful results with it. You may think that you're using a lot of powder here but don't forget that you're going to be tapping most of this off and putting it back in the pot so these little mini pots do last you a very very long time. In the background my heat tool is actually warming up and I've put a peg on the paper to give me something to grip onto because this part will take you a fair bit of time and you don't want to burn your fingers off. So I'm heat embossing from the back because I've found that this gives me a smoother finish but you'll also see the design come to life now as this wonderful embossing powder heats up. So this is the alchemy, this is the magic. So we're just following the heat gun around and you'll see how all of the details of this stamp are highlighted in this bright white. I'd like to show you something here that I've only learnt with experience that um, you can save something when it hasn't completely uh, covered the whole area. So again this is another reason why I'm going to use the stamping platform because there's a small area that was missed 
which is easily done when you've got a stamp as big as this and again I'm making sure that the paper is going straight into that corner and even though I have heat embossed this piece of paper I can go back in again with the embossing ink um, I should point out that the uh, paper did have time to cool down you don't want to be doing this directly onto the heat because um, the embossing powder is like a plastic but you're just going to ink up the area that was missed and you're going to go through the process all over again so obviously you don't need to cover the whole stump but you can double emboss if you want to but all I'm doing here is going back in finding the area that I've missed adding the ink and then I'll add the powder again and then I'll dry it off again The image is perfect now so to flatten out the paper I use my trusty stamping platform again um, and I use it as a stamping press to flatten out um, pieces of paper that I've used that might be uh, slightly warm or slightly damp so it's a handy tip to leave it in the stamping platform and then find a heavy book and just press it down um, leave it for as long as you can but I find that even if you do this for half an hour or so it will make a difference to when you're working with your papers. Let me talk you through the inks that I used. They are the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide and I went with Tumbled Glass, Twisted Citron, Worn Lipstick and Squeezed Lemonade. Um, I did have on order the speckled egg so I was quite keen to use that as soon as it arrived and I matched it up with a slightly paler green which is the shabby shutters and the tattered rose and then I thought in case I need a little bit more yellow I'll use a squeezed lemonade as well. You can either die cut your circle first and then ink it up or vice versa but I'm going to show you both ways here but do try and leave a little bit of uh, space within the design but you can use the circle at whatever point that you choose. I prefer to use a blending mat and I really like the ones that Lisa Horton um, now sells so and I also use my egg blenders they do have ink on them and I only add a little bit of the new ink at a time but I use the outside of the super smooth paper to test what um, effect I'm going to get so it's a really good way of discovering the colour mixes so if you haven't done this type of thing before this is probably the better way to get your background so let's zoom in a little bit and then you can see how the combination of the inks affects the design so you'll see that the ink repels where the heat embossing is so it's really really easy to colour something like this and you don't have to worry that your ink is going to bleed or affect the main design. So here's the new speckled egg, so this is literally my first time of using it. Um, it really is my type of colour so uh, it didn't disappoint and it really works well with the paler green. So you can see that where the blue goes over the green you get another colour again and then when all of these flowers are cut away from the main image you'll get these two or three tones that add interest to the design. Tattered Rose is another uh, new ink to me and I think that the combination of these three uh, works really really well together. It's very very subtle the first card was quite fresh and zingy but even though these are in the same colour family they are giving you a more muted tone and I think it really is very pretty it would be lovely for something like a wedding card you'll end up 
making this background two or three times depending on how many flowers you want to do and what I've also found is that if you take a piece of kitchen roll or a super smooth cloth and gently rub over the design or buff it up you'll find that all the ink comes away from that white stamping and you'll have a really really clear image so again it's another good way of using that white embossing powder all I'm doing now is adding a very very light mist of water and this has the effect of allowing the oxides to blend together in a really subtle way um, and you'll also get some almost like raindrop effects on the background so I take away the majority of the water and then I'm going to dry it off as well with my heat tool I dry it on both sides um, and then I also use the stamping platform again just to give it another extra little press down so this is version 2 where you heat emboss the image and then you cut out your circle before inking it I prefer this way of creating the circle background because I can see then where the space is and space in design is quite important to me when I'm setting up a card but I showed you the previous way of doing it because if you're new to inking with oxides and you're new to heat embossing the first method will allow you to pick the area that works the best for you I'll speed up the film while I repeat the process of inking, blending and edging the topper. I have all the components of my card now so I cut out several flowers and leaves so to make this card I ended up stamping out the original background three times and I cut out the flowers that I wanted and some leaves and then I've still got some left over so to layer up this card I'm going for a crescent effect around the left hand side I use quite a few basic techniques to add some depth and interest to the card at this point so I'm going to begin by shaping the card so I use my pokey tool and I lift up all the petals and then I use the pokey tool around between my finger and thumb and just tease the petals away from the centre you can also use um, the shaping ball tools for this but this is quite a subtle way of uh, shaping your flowers and then I've got some mini sticky pads um, and that will give me a little bit of depth because some of the flowers I'm going to raise up and then the other ones I'm going to glue down
a couple more things to do now to complete the card and the first one is to add a sentiment so there are some very fitting sentiments included in this stamp set the last time I used sending a little happiness but this time I'm going for a little hello so I used my Versafine Claire called Warm Breeze and I sealed it with some clear embossing powder so it's the same technique it's just that because you've got the quite wet Versafine ink you can seal it in with a clear embossing powder um, and it kind of fits in with the technique that you've used in the rest of the card. I cut it out with scissors and then I used some wet glue to place it to the right hand side of the flowers and then I decided that I wanted to finish the card off with a few of the pearl embellishments. I like this set that Lisa has brought out because the colours are individual so they come in a range of sizes in the 4 and 6 mil. So these are the candy pink. Then you've got the spearmint. And then you've got a very pale yellow called barley. So these happen to go with the colours that I've used in this card beautifully. So rather than using three of one colour, I decided to use um, one of three colours. So I add a dab of glue and I leave it to go slightly tacky before I add the pearl embellishments. And luckily for me, I've got one of Lisa's... Um, tweezer tools that makes all the difference for picking up these particular pearls it makes this part of the process very easy I try to work in threes when I add embellishments and in my finish card I actually moved this pink one the two finished cards I hope you'll give this technique a go thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon bye for now